So guys, this one will be big. I have tasked Uku to challenge my and Mart's previous rides to Pärnu and to Tartu. To ride from Estonia to Latvia, only 300 kilometers, and with a scooter. As we don't have this kind of big scooters, he has to build the scooter himself. How hard can it be? What do you think? Riding this thing for oh, like 12 hours straight might be a bit... Um... A bit exhausting. <laughs> the only thing that I have to get ready now is I think myself. Yeah, um, hi. Um, I think there's something wrong with my scooter. There's something protruding from the platform. So you might be wondering how this amazing, I would say almost Italian design came to be. Well, this is a return from a customer who bought another scooter and he had, he had built this. This is his handiwork. And they imagine this work actually pretty well when it's raining. So the first step is going to be just removing everything here for weight reduction first. Then secondly, because I don't want to really deal with this wiring, so I'm going to just we are going to use some even bigger wheels with much narrower tires. So this is going to be something like a road scooter with really narrow tires and optimized for long drives. This is actually one of the first power scooters we ever had for sale. The Jeep at F3. It's actually a fairly rare machine. Only like, I think like seven of them should exist. So this is going to be one less. <coughs> and. It's only gonna get one motor now, because we don't really need that much torque or speed or anything really to go at 25 kilometers an hour to rig up, but so we're just gonna have a wheel at the front. So all of the components are re removed now. And still really heavy. I don't know what this thing has been waterproofed with, but I strongly suspect that it could be just plaster. It's rock hard, it's not silicon. I don't think I know any other scooter that would have a frame that's made of steel. <laughs> this motor doesn't have a way to attach a disc to it. So we're not gonna have a break in the back. Because it can't also break with the motor, because we're gonna use a geared motor. Because that's gonna be more efficient. So it turns out I will have to figure out how to make front brakes work. This actually looks unironically really cool. Like, comment down below if you would like to see a scooter like this for sale at our store. Because, like, I think even with just the one motor on, it looks already significantly better than it did before. The reason I went with this 12-inch motor is, firstly, because in my mind bigger is better and the bigger wheel will go over the pumps in the roads more easily, so we'll waste less energy. So we'll be able to ride further. Secondly, this is a geared motor, so what that means is that in, when you spin it in one direction, you spin also the motor, so it doesn't spin very well. But in the other direction, it can spin freely, thus increasing efficiency. Also, a third reason, which I didn't know when I chose it, is that it looks really, really good on this scooter. And if you're following along at home with your own F3 and your sticker motor, then this is how you securely attach it. Left side, you need four regular washers, then the torque washer on the inside, and then there's a nut. And the other side, you have two nuts on both sides. And then there's a torque washer in here. So I drilled some holes. Let's not, let's not look at, let's not look at them. They're very, they're holes. <laughs> Took me a while to drill them. This is made out of surprisingly strong metal. And this is the jankiest way to put it together, but it will work, hopefully. Right now it's also not really at all centered. And um, to do that, I'm gonna have to use about um, precisely a million spacers.
being precise with your measurements is kind of the main thing. So that is why we only use the most precise parts and precise measurements. Yeah, I'm swapping the rear motor. I realized that there's no way to put brakes on the front wheel and I was kind of planning to put brakes on the front wheel because there was no way to put brakes on the rear wheel despite my cameraman here thinking that it's going to be completely fine to ride the Riga without brakes. I, I, I don't think so. Especially with this thing because this thing is most likely going to weigh like 60 kilos. So I'm putting a different motor on there which has brakes. Hopefully I won't die. Right, so all of the mechanical parts that we can do before the electronics are done now. The front wheel is attached and I think it looks actually pretty good. It's actually fairly well attached. The rear wheel is attached, the new one, with the brakes. It does sort of brake. It's not that strong, but it is a brake and it will protect me from the deers running across the road and the trucks that want to drive over me and things like that. And yeah, now I guess we're gonna continue with the electronics and the batteries. Speaking of the batteries, there's gonna be more than one and they're not going to be small. Yeah, um, hi, um, there's something protruding from the platform. Uh, I think it wasn't there yesterday. Help. So we had an internal discussion and we decided that we're going to also put the fourth battery in there, which um, worries me slightly because based on the last time we drove to Tartu, which was 200 kilometers, and we did that with about 3,000 watt hours of power. And uh, well, based on my calculations, we should be able to do it with like two and a tiny bit of batteries. And now we have four. So it scares me a bit because it feels like we'll arrive in Riga with just like two batteries full. And then, what then? We'll have to drive to Poland. I need a controller, but from a different dial. And the ideal controller, I think, Speedway 5 single motor controller. Found it! So I'll also need a display. And I'll also need cables for the motor, which I'll have to take off some sort of a dead board. I kind of want to find the same display that we used on the bike. I think it's this one. Is it this one? I think it's this one. And another annoying thing is that I'm gonna have to connect this, so I'm gonna have to replace the connectors. I think we're making an adapter for that. Just one more thing and we get to do a test ride. Oh, Jesus Christ. Okay, this is really heavy. Cool, I get. Much more stable. Well, it's far from being built, but uh, I think it's finally together enough so I can test it. So it doesn't drive very good, but um, I think at least it might be efficient. There's something horribly wrong with the rear tire. It's so jumpy and like weird and out of balance, but and it's really slow. But I think we'll manage with uh, not the greatest driving experience because we'll have all the range in the world. So you join us in the hardware store where we're trying to find something to build the frame out of around the batteries. And currently I'm thinking this, like that, like four of them, and then some sort of platform on top. So we went with these because, well, basically they're just cheaper than the other ones and they actually feel strong enough for what they're going to be doing. And then we also bought this hinge so we could have the top plate of the scooter easily openable when we inevitably need to start fixing it. Almost done. Now I just gotta figure out how to attach this 
to this. Make some walls around the frame that I just built here. Attach the controller in some kind of a way and fix the brakes and add some lights and the seat. Why not? What do you think? Yeah. So everything with the scooter is now ready. I think it's in the best form it's ever been in. The only thing that I have to get ready now is I think myself because um, riding this thing for oh, like 12 hours straight might be a bit um, a bit exhausting, I think, is the word, because uh, everybody kept telling me that I, I would need a seat or something on here, and I thought, well, you know, it's not that important, it's pretty nice sitting on here. It's okay, but even right now, after having ridden for like less than 15 minutes, I can already feel that it will be pretty tiring for my back and my... Well, basically my whole body, because this is not the most ergonomic position. But let's see. I have just three days to prepare.